I'll do um of course one piece and I'll make it quick. Um what was the slam last time? Yeah. You want the few slams? Yeah. You want to do twice in a row. Um Mark my words. My mother used to always tell my father to stop tickling me. I always wondered why she didn't want to hear her baby laugh when she cautioned my dad against the same action towards my brother and sister. I thought it became a plural thing, then I really started to pay attention. I started to notice the way in which my mother would speak like how in the middle of a sentence she would tap her knee or shake her leg repeatedly. This was becoming peculiar. Something that I had to stop and watch as if it was the best form of entertainment around. Uh, eventually, my fascination towards my mom's movement subsided as soon as my dad picked me up and started tickling me again. And just like that, all things went back to being normal as laughs in a silly filled our family. When my dad put me down, I tried to say again, again, and just then, the peculiar became all too familiar. In order for me to get out the second again, I had to jump up to successfully verbalize myself. Even with the struggle to get it out, Mama knew exactly what she was talking about. Because it was in that exact moment, I would become socially awkward just like her. From that moment on, we would have one another to relate to. We now shared a common language, and neither one of us could get out, which worked out since it's one that we both hate hearing, let alone sharing with one another. But if I had to go through life being so awkward, what better person to go through it with than her? To help offer me some form of solace in the years to come from encouragement that could only be given by mother to son through scattered statements like... God just wants us to speak in a different tongue than everyone else. A tongue so different that we couldn't even understand what each other was saying. I could appreciate what my mom was doing, which was being a mom, but I could have cared less about what she was saying. I was too busy praying to God for whom to take back this unique language that he gave me because I was tired of using techniques that she gave me, like while in class to read my paragraph or short story to myself, six students before it was my turn, so I just seemed normal, like Evan Austin class, but unlike Evan Austin class, when it was my turn, my plan always backfired. After I read my paragraph to myself three times, it Still didn't make a difference. The words in my mouth were not able to catch up with the words in my mind, so I had to hop up in my seat in order for the two to meet, but they still were never able to divide themselves out quite properly. Stories like that were reoccurring. Not the ones I was reading, but the ones I was living. In order for me to fit in, I had to keep my voice hidden. I said good riddance to my problem, and that was just my problem. I no longer had freedom of speech. I had to use different methods to allow myself to freely speak and all that I really wanted to say was that I felt like a freak, but I couldn't even say that. My lips were permanently sealed and I never wanted them to be. I didn't care about my voice being heard, I just wanted it to be healed. So it wouldn't be so hard for me to speak to my mom and say a simple, I love you. I would have loved to have known that my words made her smile. Those were the things I lived for as a child until I realized I only lived a life of silence. That's what everybody heard on the outside, but inside my head I heard a perfect conversation. My articulation, diction, and the words were perfect. I from Addison years practicing talking so I could make it perfect. Because I wanted to one day hear somebody say he talks too much. So I could carefully craft my words and speak in a voice with the strength of my mother and me to proudly proclaim no. I finally talk just enough.